So welcome everyone to the Dolphin Healing Collective. As always, I am so grateful and so blessed that you are here and you are um, joining this gathering uh, this month in the Dolphin Healing Collective, which is a monthly call that we bless the ocean, we bless the whales, we bless the dolphins, and all things ocean, whale, and dolphins, we just pour our blessings into and see what happens. This month, we are working together in the quantum. Uh, we have quite an interesting journey ahead of us today to support the liberation of all orcas, the freedom of all orcas. As you probably know, there are many orcas currently as I speak in captivity in small tanks and it's really heartbreaking. And uh, obviously you're here because you feel a connection to the whales and to the dolphins. And really, it's so easy to feel helpless in this world. And it's so easy. And so many people do it, understandably bless their souls and just feel like there's so much atrocity and sadness in the world that we really can't do anything about it. So we might as well just live our daily lives, try to forget about it and get on with it. Um, but, you know, those of us who are on a spiritual journey and we are awakening and we are choosing empowerment, we are realizing and we have moments of profound realization how powerful the light of our soul actually is, how powerful an awakened soul in connection with source consciousness is, how powerful it is to come into group ceremony together and to pray together, and that we really do uh, have this power and we really can make a difference. So I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm always a little bit, um, this is, I think our fourth Dolphin Healing Collective call. And every time I'm like amazed, I'm like, wow, like people are actually showing up live. This is amazing because I just, you know, there's all these offerings and invitations for you today. You're getting offerings for workshops to help you make a lot of money, which is amazing. We love abundance and money. You're having workshops to um, maybe, you know, find the love of your life or whatever it is, all these things that we do want, but you chose to use your time today to do something that's completely selfless, well, maybe not that selfless because they're our family. So of course we want to free our family. So we love that. But you know what I mean? It's like you, you're you here and you're taking this time when you could be doing so many other things uh, to support the ocean and the orcas. And I just think that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> like before I go live, I'm always like, is anyone going to show up? I don't know, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then people do. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um and Sarah is here hello love and she said this is so important amazing yes it is okay so yeah just so you know I appreciate all of you so much and if you're on replay I appreciate you so much too you're amazing and as Jesus said something like when two or more yeah when two or more come together and pray miracles happen something like that that's the gist of it and we can feel it right when we come into a circle and when we come into ceremony together and we have this shared intention, we can really feel that there's an amplification there. So I'm just so grateful for that. So let's um, talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. So first, I am going to just be speaking about uh, orcas in captivity, what that looks like. Um, I actually went almost like as visiting my family and our family in prison and almost doing a little bit of like research um, when I was in Tenerife recently um, just less than a month ago um, there are four uh, orcas in captivity there so I went to see them um, so I'm going to speak a little bit about that what I saw what the energetics were um, and just kind of get us connecting to what's actually happening. Um, and then we're going to open sacred space. We're going to call upon all of the beings of light that we're working with today, the dolphins, the whales. We're going to bring in the Lemurians and certain angels, of course, always pure source consciousness. And we're going to open sacred space. And then we're going to begin working in the quantum realms. And we're going to be working energetically to really support these beings. So most of our calls typically in the Dolphin Healing Collective um, happen with our eyes closed and doing uh, work in the quantum. Um, 
So yeah, that's, that's kind of where our power really lies as much as we would probably like to go to these places and grab an orca and run them over to the sea and help them to navigate the wild again and find their family. Like, at this time, that's not quite possible. So, you know, we do what we can energetically. And that does uh, mean a lot. So, all right. So orcas in captivity. Oh my goodness. So what a sad situation. We're not going to get too sad. I well, this part's going to be sad, but when we do the work on the quantum, I tuned in earlier and we're not going to be like going up against the shadow forces and like staring them down and just being like blasting love and really like dealing with them. We're going to leave that to certain angels that we're going to be working with. Um, we're going to be more focusing our presence into the freedom grids, into um, the empowerment of the sacred feminine, which we're going to talk about a little in a little bit and understand how that connects to orcas being free. So just so you know, even though we're about to speak about some sort of sad, upsetting things, we're not going to be staying there the whole call because it is important that we sort of enter into basically the opposite frequency so we can really anchor that in for our brothers and sisters who are in these uh, tanks, okay? So, but yeah, the captive orca industry, just like what a shit show of just So, you know, I don't know exactly when it began off the, at the top of my head. I think it was around the 60s um, that they began to go after uh, orca whales and, well, really orcas or dolphins, what we call them whales, so that's fine. Um, a lot of them died when they were trying to figure out how they could keep them in captivity. A lot of them died from the trauma. Um, you know, you imagine what their families would have gone through. Orcas have incredibly deep family bonds like incredibly deep way deeper than the average human family will feel with one another not to say that humans don't have strong family bonds because they do um but it's just that they are um really alive to their intense soul connections with their family and you know the the children stay with their mothers for life like the the males stay with their mothers for life these are you know matriarch uh, pods uh, typically the oldest female of the pod sort of leads the pod and they're they're not like um coming in and out of each other's pods and saying oh hi mom I'll see you like in six months and oh another one and like socializing everywhere like occasionally the rogue orca does that um but typically they are staying with their family for life so you can imagine you know what trauma would happen when these random crazy psychotic humans come in and just like oh I don't even want to do it. we're not going to even fully go into that just because it's so sad but that's obviously where they're getting the orcas from the wild they bring them into the tanks um some of them uh you know are still being captured some of them you know began to breed and do these breeding programs um and Although um, SeaWorld has ended their breeding program due to public pressure, there are still um, different beings and organizations who are still going after capturing wild orcas and continuing the industry. So um, there has been a lot of progress, especially in the West. However, uh, you know, with certain films like Blackfish, uh, around ending the captive orca industry. However, in other places and areas of the world with different cultures and different levels of consciousness, they are um, not as interested in ending the captive orca industry. Um, but we are going to definitely see it ended today and all orcas as free. So when I went into um, Tenerife, uh, and I went into Loro Parque, uh, which is Spanish for Parrot Park, uh, in this, what they call an animal embassy. Really, it's just a big zoo. Um, and I went to go see the orcas, and I could only see them for the orca show. I couldn't really, like, they kind of closed everything until the orca show was starting. Um, so I went to this orca show. And I was like, oh, I'm going to like, yeah, I was like, 
So, you know, I've only ever seen orcas in the wild before this. Okay. And I'd never seen any cetacean dolphin or whale in captivity until, you know, this day, less than a month ago and go. And I'm like, oh man. Okay. So immediately I see this orca with a uh, flopped dorsal fin, which is pretty typical across the board for male orcas in captivity to have that flopped dorsal fin. And so the show begins to start and they're telling the audience a lot of things to make the audience feel really good about that they're there, that it's really okay. And actually they're helping the orcas by being there, by buying a ticket. And I also prayed over the money that I was spending to that park. I was like, I pray golden light that this money serves the liberation of all beings, right? So if you ever do go visit a captive orca because you do want to bless them, you want to pray for them, you just want to basically visit your family in prison, you can always bless the money that you're spending um, to serve serve the liberation of all beings and go in there very intentionally. So, um, yeah, the show is going on and, and they were basically saying, and like, oh my gosh, poor orcas are so beautiful, but like, they, they look so cute. Like they look like they're having fun because their faces are just so cute and they make them like go like open their mouths and like wiggle and like make them do things that a human would do if it was happy. Right. Like, ah, right. And so it looks that it looks to be that these beings are, you know, happy and having fun. Um, but really they're just doing the tricks that they need to do to get the food um, and sort of do what they need to do to exist and survive. Um, and they were basically saying that, well, one, they said, oh, the dorsal fin collapses sometimes in orcas due to gravity. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys, this is like so crazy. Just outright lies they're telling these people, right? Like, no, the dorsal fin doesn't collapse due to gravity. There are, it's very, 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 very rare that a dorsal fin will ever collapse in the wild. I've never seen a wild orca personally with a collapsed dorsal fin. Basically, it doesn't happen. It happens because of stress. It happens because of malnutrition. It happens because of depression. It happens because of the lack of strength that they're getting, right? Um, so, you know, and they're also saying, you know, it's so good that you're here. You're really supporting wild orcas because we can step study them now that they're in the tanks we can study them and do things that we would never be able to do in the wild for example we can learn about their lung capacity because as climate change happens and as the world warms up the orcas are going to have to dive deeper for food and they're going to have to hold their breath in a different way than before, maybe longer. So if we understand their lung capacity, then we can help them in the wild. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, in no way is it going to help a wild orca if it, one scientist in a lab somewhere goes, wow, an orca can hold its breath for seven minutes and this is the capacity of their lungs. That's amazing. You know, that's not going to help an orca actually, like, I just, I mean, like, but if you're unconscious and you're going to these shows, you're not going to be necessarily making these um, connections in your brain. You're going to be going, oh yeah. So I just kind of wanted to, to share what's happening kind of behind the scenes. And in these shows is there are really, it's just pure propaganda saying, you know, you're doing such a good thing by being here today for wild orcas. They're so happy here. Um, However, you know, the show ends, everyone goes away. And of course I am um, sitting there still as, as long as I can kind of to just like be with them. And then I go um, just next to one that's just now they all have to go. So they don't even get to stay necessarily together in the tanks. There's one that goes in one tank, another like, and there's like, so the tanks are so small and, and yet they're split up they're in there's like fences in between the tanks. So the, the photo that you see of tanks at SeaWorld or wherever it is, often they're not even that big. They're, they're like divided, um, probably because orcas get aggressive with each other um, when they are in captivity, obviously for obvious reasons, you would probably wanna hit somebody too if you were stuck in a bathroom with them for 20 years. Um, 50 years. So I was like with this orca um, on the side that was just literally swimming. Don't worry, like we're going to get like a little less sad soon, but it's just so sad that we have to sometimes 
honor the sad, you know, which gives us the fuel to do, you know, this work. Um, it was just swimming around over and over again, such a tiny tank. And I was like sending it energy and I was like trying to communicate with it, but it was almost like it was just there were, and it was blessing the water in the tank and the water, because water takes on memory. It takes on energy. So I have this water in front of you, me, many of you know, if I say, I love you water, I bless you water. Or even if I just hold it to my heart and I'm laughing and I'm happy, the water is going to be resonating with that frequency. It's a conductor. So I was blessing the water and I was feeling, oh my goodness, this water feels so angry. So I knew that the orca was feeling a lot of anger and frustration because the water was feeling anger and frustration. And it almost felt like that orca to me was unreachable on that level. It's higher consciousness came in uh, that day and later on in that day to speak with me. But on that level, it was almost just, I think it was just, you know, they load them up probably on drugs and all these things too, to just like keep them healthy. Um, and you know, I think they, they just really do what they need to do to kind of like survive and put their consciousness somewhere else um, for the most part. So um, yeah, like that's really sad. So that's what happened. And I walked away being like, oh my goodness, like I just want to do everything that I possibly can to help you be free. Um, and so this is, you know, one of the things that I can do is, is gather, you know, people like you who care deeply about these beings and care deeply about the ocean and our brothers and sisters of the sea and who know that we're family and we can do this work together. And, you know, I will say that from our human perspective, there's really only one way we're looking at this right now, which is, oh my goddess, this is so terrible. I do want to acknowledge, however, that on the higher levels, there are there is a different perspective that isn't necessarily as entrenched in duality, bad or good, than our brains are used to working. So I do want to acknowledge that I believe that there are soul contracts going on. I do believe that on some level there have been soul contracts made with these souls um, to do that and to be there. Um, however, that doesn't mean that it's okay for them to be there. And what I mean by that is sometimes I think a being will take on a soul contract to help wake up humanity, to help wake up the collective. And so if there's something that's really off that's happening, well, potentially that soul is in mastery level training um, to really find that mastery within in very challenging situations. Another thing that can potentially be happening is they are meant to, to they are wanting to display right in our faces, this is what you've become humanity. This is how you're operating in your collective consciousness. Uh, and it is hurting uh, the ocean, the divine mother. And potentially there's that soul agreement to rouse us into waking up, into activating our fire and say, not on my watch, not anymore, not anymore for the children, for the animals, for the plants, for all beings, not anymore. So again, I do want to acknowledge that there are things in certain soul contracts and agreements that may be happening here that we don't necessarily understand or you know, know about kind of thing. Um, but again, just because these soul, these beings might have soul contracts to be there doesn't mean we don't do anything about it and just say, oh, well, it's a soul contract. They can figure it out. I have um, someone who I listen to who is very connected to the whales and the dolphins who channels them. But in one session with her said, oh, well, they have a soul contract to be there. So, you know, I loved going to SeaWorld. I went all the time. I had a season's pass because, you know, they have a soul contract to be there. And I was just like, like, I just see this so differently, so differently. Again, just because a soul contract is in place doesn't mean that we just 
ignore it. We're all interconnected. And that experience is meant to affect us and arouse something in us and help us to activate that warrior light within. Because as we do, we do it for all beings and we live our lives differently. We don't, we don't live in, um, zombie land right you know if we if we if we let ourselves feel if we let ourselves get angry if we let ourselves get upset and we let ourselves pass those frequencies through our hearts and we ask our souls like what do you want me to do here our whole lives become different because we start to have the courage to do things that are uncomfortable to go out of our comfort zone and to make choices in our lives that are going to be very powerful expressions of who we really are so it all works together okay that's how I feel so let me know if you have any questions or comments um in the chat if you're live and on replay in the comment um box so okay I'm just been chatting away we gotta get going here on the actual work <laughs> a little bit of a chatter myself I'm just like I am an orca being so <laughs> we just like love to vocalize okay so let's begin to open sacred space together and when you're ready, you can close your eyes with me if that feels good. Take a deep breath. And first, just honor and acknowledge yourself for being here and just witnessing the beauty and purity of your own heart. For being here and knowing that you are so infinitely connected to these beings, these really angelic beings. I consider dolphins and whales angelic beings of the sea. And as we breathe and we come into presence in our bodies, feeling everything that we're feeling, we call the presence of our higher selves in to merge with our bodies. Higher self, thank you for filling every cell of my body. Higher self, thank you for filling every chakra and just see waves and waves of light and empowerment filling your body, knowing that your soul is freedom itself, that you are the gift, the blessing, the medicine. And as you embody who you truly are, which is freedom, you help awaken the world to who they truly are as well. So we call in now the beautiful dolphins of divine light to be here with us. We call upon the orca, our orca soul family of unconditional love to be here with us now. We call upon the higher consciousness and the souls of all orcas who are in captivity. And we recognize that there are dolphins and belugas and other cetaceans in captivity, and we bless them and we honor them. And we intend that this blessing will definitely support to heal their liberation. And in future dolphin healing collective calls, we will bring the full focus onto them. But we know that with this work today, we are supporting the freedom of all beings. We call forth the humpback whales, the gray whales, the beluga whales the Southern right whales. We call for the whale nation. Thank you so much for surrounding us in your highest aspects that we're able to receive and connect with at this time for the highest good of all. And we call forth the white whales who are very vast angelic beings at a very high dimensional level. So you might actually see that there are white whales, maybe they look like white humpback whales that are overlighting our gathering today that are high above us and the overlighting. Imagine that our, we have a circle and there's dolphins and whales swimming around our circle. And then right at the top, there's these beautiful white whales and these beautiful angels. We call upon the Archangel of Grace to join the white whales. And we call upon Archangel Michael and Archaea Faith. Archangel Michael's feminine counterpart. And we summon the legions of light of Archangel Michael in faith now present here. You may feel the strength and the power of these angelic beings arriving 
You might become aware of their blue light that they're bringing, gold, as well as a little bit of violet. We call forth the crystalline consciousness of the earth and the oceans, and we call forth the angels and the archangel of the sea, of the ocean, and of the water, the angels of the water. We summon all of our higher selves, and we bring in pure mother-father consciousness, God consciousness, source consciousness, to activate our gathering today. We intend that this gathering and all the energy that is created here support the liberation of all orcas, serve the joy and the freedom and the health of all orcas, all cetaceans, and all sentient beings. May all beings be free. May all orcas be free. And may all of the energy today that we share and build and focalize serve this intention. All orcas are free. And so just visualizing now all orcas as free. Taking a deep breath. And we're going to go into a journey now. With our eyes closed, we are going to begin this quantum work. We also ask that Archangel Michael protect this space with his powerful energy of light so that we are in a beautiful energetic of pure source consciousness love. And so first, we are going to go visit now the orcas in captivity. So I want you to ask your higher self, higher self, please take me and all of the other souls on this call, live or on replay, with their permission, please take our group to go be with every single orca in captivity right now. Simultaneously, we are with now all orcas in captivity. And you might just visualize one in front of you or one tank and just see this orca or these orcas in front of you in their tanks and feel our collective energy of love and reach out and feel this collective heart energy of our collective heart. See this glowing collective love energy that all of our hearts are combining into. Feel your love for the orcas. And I want you to send that love directly into this orca with the intention that it is this orca is actually all orcas in captivity. And I want you to feel their heart. And I want you to bless their heart. As we say, we love you. We honor you. We respect you. We are thinking of you. We are praying for you. And we are in love with you. You may even see a white, golden, or pink light or another color that comes to you surrounding this orca. And we ask that our higher selves connect with the higher consciousness of all the orcas in captivity to ensure that they receive this transmission. And now we feel the presence of their families in the wild and we bless, stay with your energy in the tank, but go ahead and bless their families. Feel yourself as a bridge of connection. We didn't forget about you, we love you. And just blessing the families of all those in the oceans that have lost their loved ones. We love you, we're sorry, we bless you. Now, we call forth the Archangel of Resolution and the Angels of Resolution. And we ask the Angels of Resolution to be present now 
and to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week until the frequency of resolution has fully permeated this situation of orcas in captivity. Next, we call upon the Archangel of Grace and the Angels of Grace. And we ask the Archangel of Grace and the Angels of Grace to be with each orca in captivity, 24 hours a day, seven days a week with their higher self's permission to bless each of these orcas with the frequency of grace, to bless the waters in the tank with the frequency of grace, and to open up portals of grace so that the frequency, the living light of grace, the living Sophia light of grace with their higher self's permission permeates each of these orcas and allows their experience to be easier as the angels of grace are here with them. And we ask for a healing that all of these beings are receiving a healing now that any trauma that any suppressed anger with their higher self's permission is now being cleansed by the Archangel of Grace and by the love of the Creator and by our love. Good. Just cleansing and blessing these Orca beings only with their higher self's permission. We ask that the frequency of grace moves through them, blesses every cell of their body, every organ. And we ask for the powerful frequency of love to activate inside of them so that they feel this love and that this love brings healing. And now we see that this love is beginning to emanate from these tanks. And it's emanating, it's emanating, it's emanating. And we can see energetically everything that is connected into these tanks that is allowing these beings to be trapped there, to be there. And we send the frequency of love, 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 love through these connections. And we call forth now Archangel Michael, Archaea Faith and the Legions of Light. So you may see a very powerful blue sapphire, blue gold, violet, whoever you see, however you see angel, Archangel Michael with Archaea Faith, the feminine version, Michaela Faith white sapphire blue and and legions like so many angels who are at their command essentially who co-create with them who co-serve with them and you can see that these beings please ask them Michael, Michaela, Archangel Michael in faith and the legions of light please be with each orca in captivity now and please track all of the energy that is allowing them to be in this container rather than free and wild in the sea. Track all of these energies and please blast your powerful frequencies. Track every single energy to every single root cause and do what you need to do by the power of divine will in alignment with divine will to free these energies, to clear these energies, do whatever you need to do to free all orcas, all cetaceans, liberate all beings. So you might see blue flames tinged with violet beginning to fill all of these tendrils of connection around the world. And this is where they say, for this part, we've got it from here. So just allow them to do their work. Michael, Michaela, the legions of light, be with all of the orcas, send these blessings, send this transmutation through all root causes of what allows them to be there in alignment with divine will. This is so, and so be it. So Archangel Michael is giving me the nod to move on because they're going to continue working in this space, okay? So now we're going to go do something else. So we bless these orcas and we know that the Archangel of Grace and the Angels of Grace is with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, okay? Until their spirits, their souls, their bodies have been liberated. We ask this to be so. Okay, so now knowing that the Orcas are, we're still connected in with them, but we're just gonna zoom out a little bit and we're gonna bless and hold the world. And as we breathe, 
I just need to explain something here. So what the orca showed me this morning was that one of the root causes, one of what allows this to happen on the planet is the enslavement and the suppression of the sacred feminine. So the orcas are black Madonna frequency, black rose, blue rose frequency and beyond and more. They are emissaries of the divine mother and they hold the frequency of the black womb of the divine mother, the feminine aspect of God, okay? Now, of course, there's more to them than that. However, they are very, very powerful embodiments of the divine feminine and the sacred feminine. And so when we look at our planet and we understand, and this is what the angels are currently working on. This is what the legions of light and Michael and Archaea faith are also working on because they're connected into every tendril, every single tendril that allows these beings to be where they are. So also just understanding that they're also working on any grid lines and any systems of oppression and enslavement of the sacred feminine. Because when we look at what is happening to the ocean and dolphins and whales, we can honor that this is what they're telling us is happening to our emotions, to our inner children, and to the divine feminine. Because that is what the whales and the oceans represent and are emissaries for. Emotions, inner children, the innocence, and the sacred feminine, the divine feminine. Okay. Okay. So obviously, you know, there is, again, more to the story, but this is what we're focusing on right here, right now. Okay. So with this knowingness, what we're going to move into is we're calling upon the grandmother whales, okay? So you can just see the beautiful ocean, the beautiful earth, and we know that th these orcas are being taken care of right now. Angels are working with them, okay? So we're going to, we're shifting our, our focus now to call upon the grandmother whale energies. So the grandmother whale energies are very ancient energetics beings souls and they go far beyond this earth okay so this is the divine feminine wisdom ancient divine feminine wisdom that we call forth the grandmother whale energy so i want you to just visualize and imagine that there are grid lines all around the world and we're calling forth the grandmother whale grid lines it's almost like sacred geometry is imposed over the globe and there's all these different lines that make these sacred geometries so we have the grandmother whale grid lines i want you to connect your heart into the grandmother whale grid lines just imagine that your heart through intention is connecting with grandmother whale and all of the energetics of sound and light that she's weaved into this planet which we call grid lines all right now I want you to simultaneously ground and center your heart into the freedom grids, the energy of freedom, the crystalline fifth dimensional and above energetics of freedom and all of the grid lines and all of the sacred geometries of this planet. And now, Okay, now, so your heart's connected to grandmother whale energies. It's connected to freedom grids. And now you're going to connect to the sacred feminine grid lines, the free, empowered, sacred feminine grids. Okay, so my heart is connected to the sacred feminine grids. My heart is connected to the grandmother whale and freedom grid lines. And feel your love pouring through these grid lines. As we recite the mantra from your heart, May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. 
So as we repeat this over and over for a few moments, I want you to just imagine the light in your heart, this reality that all orcas are free, that the sacred feminine is liberated and empowered. This is the new earth frequency, the new earth consciousness. And the whale nation and the dolphins are supporting us and bringing us so much sound and sonar and love to empower our hearts now. So I want you to just feel in your heart what you know to be true deep down, that you are free, that the sacred feminine is free, that source consciousness is free, that all beings are free. This is the true reality. And I want you to empower these grid lines with your heart as we say, may the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. May all orcas be free. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. Two more times. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. And we're going to actually do it one more time, but really feel this time your heart feeling all these grid lines, the freedom grid lines. Yay, freedom. Super happy, amazing fifth dimensional grid lines of freedom, source consciousness, the grid lines of the grandmother, the ancient grandmother whale and all of the energy that they've put on this planet, that they've seeded into this planet and vibrated through this planet. And the sacred feminine empowered feminine grid lines and the songs of the sacred feminine empowerment. I want you to feel your heart just sending so much love and so much empowerment and connection and centeredness and grounding through these grid lines and know that they are free. They are living. They are not linear lines. They are not static. They are living. They are free. They are fluid. They are flexible. They are moving. They are filled with light. And as you bless these uh, grids and the sacred geometries, we say, may the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. Okay, amazing. We just got a few more minutes to go. So you're doing amazing. So now in your heart, I want you to see that there is a quartz crystal. And this quartz crystal has been charging with this mantra, with this prayer. May the sacred feminine be empowered. May the sacred feminine be free. May all orcas live in joy. All orcas are now free. So this crystal, I want you to take this crystal out of your heart, this quartz crystal. And I want you to hold in your hand this beautiful quartz crystal. And you can put your other hand over this crystal and you can begin to energize this crystal or just vibrate it through your heart still, these prayers. And you're gonna, in this crystal, you're going to place this energy, this intention, this knowingness of the new earth frequencies. All orcas are free. 
in this crystal, visualize and see that all orcas are so free, so wild, so healthy, so happy. And actually all sentient beings are free. The sacred feminine is free and wild and just her crazy, beautiful, wild self. And just feel the happiness that all beings are free, that you go out into the ocean and this is just, oh my goodness, the ocean is so happy. The whales are so happy. The orcas are so happy. There is freedom for all beings. And if there's any part of you that's still remembering the orcas and the tanks and that they're not free, if there's any part of you that's still holding that in your consciousness, just put a violet flame around that. Burn, just continually violet flame, have a violet purple fire burning so that all of the tendrils of the old earth are just falling away until this violet flame. And that in this crystal, you see an orca and you just, just see like an orca smiling, like an orca with a big, big happy face. I'm free, I'm free, everyone's free, my whole family is free, life is amazing, humans are free, animals are free, and say, higher self, please fill this crystal with the activation of the new earth codes. Please fill this crystal with the information and the sacred geometry. Of the new earth and the new golden age, where all beings are free, where all orcas are free, where the sacred feminine is free, and all beings live in harmony with the one heart. Higher self, energize and activate this crystal with these freedom codes. And now ask higher self, please place this crystal. See your higher self taking you somewhere on the planet right now. Please show me where to place this crystal. And your higher self is going to show you somewhere on the earth. You don't even have to see it or know where it is. Just know that it's happening. And there's a specific part of a ley line or a portal or a grid or a sacred place or a power spot where your higher self is going to guide you to place this crystal. Don't worry again if you can't see it. Just know that it's happening. Higher self, show me where to place this crystal. Let this be done. And place it into the soil or the water or the rocks or the sand or the tree roots. Feel, sense, or see all of our crystals connecting now. Feel the trees and the plants singing along. All orcas are now free. All beings are now free. Take a deep breath in. And now have a moment to receive any guidance or any integration that you need at this time. Take a deep breath. Thank you to my heart, soul, and higher self for showing me what my role is in this now moment, in this lifetime. So I may continually serve the liberation of all beings 
and I intend that with each breath that I take, my very beingness serves the liberation of all beings. And so they're free. And so we've arrived in the new earth consciousness. And so we forgive all that has come before us. And so we're free. Take a deep breath in. Taking your time, all the time you need to come back to this space. Deep breaths, big energy, lots of integration, maybe some water. All right, and as we come back, arrive back, whether you're live or on replay, you are welcome to share anything that you feel is important for you to share or joyous or helpful for you to share. Uh, for the lives, we won't be doing video shares on these Dolphin Healing Collective calls, just shares in the chat. Uh, and then if you're on replay, you can share in the comment field. Um, so... Yeah, I felt that too. Tara says, Tara says the forgiveness piece uh, felt wonderful. Yeah, just that little moment of, you know, we forgive all that has come before us felt important. And that is a great point. And I'm glad that you brought that, you know, the importance of the forgiveness piece, because this is a frequency as well as the violet fire is the embodiment of potentized forgiveness and compassion. So we can continually work with the energy of forgiveness. Self-forgiveness is so massive on our journey and forgiveness for everything that has happened that keeps our field clear and that helps to transmute density at a very fast pace. Uh, and you can always just visualize the violet flame as well. Um, Denise says, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Leanna says, thank you. Isabella says, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining this Dolphin Healing Collective call. Let's just close the space now together with the closing uh, prayer that's used in the Sophia Code. Yana is saying thank you. So it goes like this. It is done. It is done. It is done. By the power of three, a perfect trinity. It is done. So feel the completion of what we've done here together today and just like how much of a rock star you are for being here today. Thank you so much. Uh, Liana says, the town I live in has a dolphin marine park. You have inspired me to visit dolphin ancestors. Yay! Yeah, you know, I think when you visit with intention and prayer, um, I think it can be a really beautiful thing, sometimes a challenging thing. Um, but you know, do what you feel in your heart is right. Um, and also my experience, um, there were dolphins as well in captivity and Laura Parque, and I went to go see the dolphins and they were so much happier. Do I agree with any cetaceans in captivity, really any animals in captivity? No. Um, however, I understood, wow, these um, dolphins are doing amazing healing work in here. They are so powerful and such amazing healers. So I also want to acknowledge all of the healing that the dolphins and the orcas are doing in captivity still with these circumstances. I just want to thank them so much. And just know that if you do feel called to visit them very intentionally, you can and will receive a healing and really let that be received in your heart because that's a blessing no matter if it's from a wild or a captive dolphin. 
Um, Uti says, thank you. I've visualized a lot of fireworks for all citations. Yay, celebration. There's so much joy and freedom. Yay. Brandy says, thank you. Denise says, I live on Vancouver Island. Amazing. And was in the ocean last night. We'll be bringing more intentionality to my prayers next time. Oh, beautiful. Enjoy the beauty of Vancouver Island. So many orcas, like Vancouver Island is, as you know, uh, you know, a orca hotspot. So it's an amazing place to work with them, as well as um, uh, many orcas in captivity were actually taken from the southern resident pod who, um, you know, moves around Vancouver Island and also into the Pacific Northwest of the states. So they are so connected, obviously, into this and can work with you if you ever feel inspired to reach out to them telepathically. Um, Joanna says, thank you. Seeing all the crystals light up the world is so powerful. I agree agree to so much okay amazing thank you everyone and I just do want to share one announcement um just for your own personal uh journey um if you do ever want to meet with me for a one-on-one -on -one session where we do some channeling and healing and activation work together for you and for your soul mission so you can be of more effective service I am offering 25% off on my one-on-one -on -one angel intuitive sessions just until uh, February 22nd if you book before then so just a little announcement for you and and Naomi said, um, the crystals were so intense and I could see all orcas free. Yay, that is so amazing. Um, and I know, Naomi, you have such a psychic visual. You see things so clearly. So, um, and if you, uh, if you need that information about a 25% off code, please um, email me, go to my uh, Instagram page uh, and you'll find the code there, dolphin.rose.temple or just feel free to email me and ask for it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for being here today. Uh, thank you for being of service and just know that your personal mission is so important. And the more that you feel the freedom, that's the, something that the, uh, higher consciousness of the orcas after I visited them in Tenerife told me was the best thing that you can do for us is to just be so free and enjoy the freedom in your life and just live the shit out of your life and just be so happy with your freedom. We are not in the old paradigm of if another being is suffering, then I need to be really sad and suffer until they're free. And that means that I'm in, um, in, you know, what's that word? You probably know this word because maybe you're seeing it. I'm in, you know, I'm in not collaboration with them, but I'm in like, maybe you can fill it in for me to, in service, yeah, in service, in service with them. Oh, sorry, we need to be finishing the call, but I just see, you know, when you have a word on your mind, you're like, what is that word? Um, it's like when something happens in the world and you're like in, and these people, you know, do a march and say, yeah, we're in something with you. We're in compassion with you. No, we're in, um, thanks for the words. We're in partake with solidarity with you. Thank you. Okay. So it's not like they're, they're telling us, um, you know, you got to be sad. Of course, you, you know, the dolphin and whale consciousness, they're never going to say that, you know, to be in solidarity with us, you know, the best thing we can do, live your wild life live your free life, unleash the sacred feminine within you, activate all of these frequencies that we worked with today, ground in those freedom codes and know that, you know, you're amazing. Your personal mission is so important and you do you and you pursue what's in your heart, what's on your heart. Um, and that is going to be such a blessing. So, so much love. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. We did so much in an hour. I can't even believe it. Um, I appreciate you so much. And let Let's continue to swim together. We meet every month for the Dolphin Healing Collective. Uh, and there's lots of dolphin and whale content that comes out of me that um, you can connect with that will support you in your connection. But of course, you don't need any of that. You can always just go into your heart, call upon the dolphins and the whales, and they will be there with you. Uh, and, you know, being your friends, allies, your guides, and your playmates. So much love, many blessings. You are amazing. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.